بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أيها الإخوة الأحباب بارك الله فيكم Inshallah ta'ala we will continue our topic that we have discussed last night which was the responsibility of the parents toward their children. Every parent is holding some responsibilities for their children to educate them, to guide them to the right path. And Allah Azza wa Jalla will ask them in the day of judgment. Barakallahu feekum. As we mentioned in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara Protect from yourself and for your children from the hellfire. Qu anfusakum Star First of all for yourself. Protect for yourself from the hellfire by following the the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and following the, the order of Allah azza wa jal. Order are two types. Doing something and refraining something. Amrun tanfid al-awamir wa intiha an-nawahi. Contains two things. Order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Either Allah commands you something to do. For example, Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded us to pray five daily prayers. We have to pray and fulfill the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to fast the month of Ramadan. We have to pay our charity. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us some sort of, of, of wealth. If our wealth reaches the point to pay the, the zakah, the charity, we have to pay 2.5. And hajj. That's for example. If Allah Azza wa Jal commands us something to do, and we have ability to do it, we must do it. And the second part of the command of Allah is prohibitions. Things that Allah forbidden which means not to do it, refrain. For example, Allah Azza wa Jalla has prohibited the, the zina, fornication. He prohibited killing innocent person. He prohibited stealing property from the people. He prohibited so much th things, drinking alcohol, we should refrain all that. And why we leave that? Because Allah has ordered us to, do, to refrain and to leave it. Not for any other reason. If someone said, for example, I don't want to drink alcohol because it messes up my liver, it's going to make me my brain, this and that. I don't want to drink. He's not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not drinking alcohol. Because he did not he left alcohol because of the order of Allah Azza wa Jal, obeying Allah's order. So he will never get rewarded for that. So always we have to have intention. When we're doing something, we do it because Allah has ordered us to do it. And when we refrain something also, we have to niyyah Allah has prohibited and we're obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. When we do that, we really will be entitled to become mu'minun al-muttaquna lillahi and then the paradise is for us. Man amila salihan min dhakirin aw untha wa huwa mu'min fala nuhyiyanna wa hayatan tayyibah. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, 
المؤمن whoever does good righteous deeds من عمل صالحا and we mention عمل صالح is that two types following the commands and staying for prohibitions that's عمل صالح and he do the person when he do that وهو مؤمن while he's a believer non believer if he said for example he said I, I will fast Ramadan I've seen so many people saying I will fast this this Ramadan with the Muslim people but I'm not Muslim don't don't get me wrong I'm not Muslim but I'm, I'm gonna fast this this month so you know, for purpose of health if he fasts the whole 10, 30 days he will never get rewarded for that because he's not a believer right yeah the, to believe in Allah Azza wa Jal is a condition for all good deeds now some people who are kufar, they do good righteous deeds, but they get the reward in this dunya. But hereafter, no. All the good reward and paradise will be based for the iman and tawheed and taqwa. Yeah. Without that base, you're not getting anything in akhirah. This dunya may be وَقَدِّمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ فَجْعَلْنَا هَبَاءً مَنْ ثُورًا In the Akhira. So, after you become righteous, good deed, person, then you have responsibility for the people that you really care of. Your children first. You have to educate them. You have to make them uh, follow the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the topic what we were talking about last night, right? Yes. But if some brothers ask question is, some uh, brothers, they really educate their children Islamically, spend a lot of money and time, you know, making them memorize the Quran, taking them Muslim world to, you know, uh, live Islamic world and to see the culture and Islamic, you know, lifestyles and different that. And then when they come back, to uh, America or somewhere, and they they intermingle with the with the other non-Muslim life. They go straight quickly. So the father and, 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 and mother, uh, they will be accountable for, for, for their mistakes for those children. We're gonna answer this question today, and we will use two. Uh, models that Allah has mentioned in the Quran. Two fathers, they are, both of them, they are righteous, you know, good persons. They are messengers. And they have both of them children. And we will see the results comes after they spend time and everything and da'wah and khair and so on. How the uh, the life of the child ends up. And, but anyway, the fathers, they holding, you know, obligation to, toward their children to teach them and to give them nasiha. If you read Surah Al-Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Mada? وَإِذْ قَالَ اللُّقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّا لا تشرك بالله. لغمان said to his child, his son, Oh my son, لا تشرك بالله. Never associate with Allah partner subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never commit shirk. Why in the shirk ladulbun adim? Indeed, the shirk and association partners with Allah is a great dhulm. Dhulm here is transgression and passing the, all the limits that Allah has set for the mankind. If you pass this limit, then really you cross the last line that Allah has set for the mankind not to cross it. Shirk al dhulmun azim. So he started educating his son by Tawheed, teaching him Allah, the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal, his names. His attributes, so he cannot mix it. Allah, 
the true God, the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the qualities of Allah azza wa jal, to the things that was created. Like so many people have today in this world. They are looking for a God, but they, they, they really went astray. You see some of them saying God is, is, a, is a what? Is a galaxy. Some of them saying uh, the, the mankind. Some said Buddha is, is a God. Krishna is a God. Uh, Jesus Christ is a God. Uh, you know, the man. The worst thing is uh, Christianity, they are claiming they have a book, divine message. And then they go to this big mistake, which making the humankind a God and give it divine characteristics. This was a big problem. Other, you know, paganists or Hindus or, uh, you know, Buddhists, those people, they don't claim that they have divine message. Rather, what they believe is the philosophy that uh, Buddha came with it or Krishna or this and that. And that philosophy came <coughs> from the, the aql. Bismillah. So people who follow their intellect only and stay away from the divine or, or message coming from uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, they could make billion, billion mistakes. But a person, when people who claim that they have divine message and they're saying big shirk like this, that's a big problem. Naib, <clears> Taib. <throat> So he started teaching his child the Tawheed. And so we, every time we have to start this, this you know, subject, this topic is a very essential topic. Every single person has to learn Allah, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names and his attributes and his qualities. So he cannot mix it between creator and his creation. Separation. That's separate. But once we don't know Allah Azza wa Jal, everything is Allah. Everything is God. That's what they believe, some people. So he started the da'wah, da'wah al-anbiya. All the messengers, they start their da'wah by the tawheed. Allah ma lakum min ilahin Worship Allah alone. And you don't have any other than Allah as a God. And he, after he... After he teaches his child the Tawheed, he go down all the way to the, uh, the act of worships. Ya Bunaya Aqim is Salah. Aqim is Salah. After the Tawheed, after the believing system, it comes the action. First action to do is to do the Salah. Salah is the greatest ibadah. Because Salah, it contains all the Tawheed plus humbleness and submission, physical submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. How people see you, you believe in Allah. We have to bow down for Allah and we have to prostrate, put our face in the ground. When we do that, we do for Him alone. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, the best act of worship that we do and the time we be close to Allah the most is the time we are in sujood, prostration. So Allah, Azza, we, we humble ourselves to Allah Azza wa Jal while we glorify Him. Just we're not putting our face down there. That's it. We keep mentioning His name and glorify Him. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Bowing down and still saying these words. Subhana Rabbi al azim Subhana Rabbi al azim With the khushu' Deep khushu' And you feel that you're talking to him, Allah, directly. That's what the Prophet said. When you pray, you are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are talking to him. So, always have some sort of concentration. Don't be scared your mind different places. Just make sure that you are really focusing your prayers, your dua 
and your adhkar, aqim is salah. And then after that, wa'amur bil ma'roof, wanha anil munkar. After you become a good person and you upload all these qualities by yourself, you don't have to stay there. You have to protect the other fellow humanity, the mankind. Amru bil ma'roof wa nahi an munkar to the others. We have to engage some sort of, of da'wah. So we share this hidayah to the others. That's why Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Kuntum khayra ummatil ukhrija lil nas ta'murun ba'rufi wa tahun al munkar. And then he said, Wasbir ala ma asabaka inna dhalika min azim al umur. Giving da'wah to the others is really difficult. You're talking to someone about Allah, about, you know, hereafter, about leaving things that are forbidden. And he thinks that you are crossing line for him. How dare you? How you can talk to me that way? Or may harm you. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Wasbir ala ma asabak. So many people, they don't value it you know, value your da'wah. And they dislike maybe to talking to them. Especially this time, this era, that everybody thinks he's, he's you know, intellect and he, nobody can tell him nasiha. Yeah. وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ وَلَا تُسْعَرْ خَدَّكَ لِنَاشِ How you deal with the people, the akhlaq. وَلَا تُسْعَرْ خَدَّكَ لِنَاشِ Don't be arrogant toward the people. Always deal with the people nice nicely and good manner. وَلَا تُسْعَرْ خَدَّكَ لِنَاشِ Don't do like that. When you تُسْعِرُ الْخَدِّ هَكَذَا وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا don't walk on the earth, marahan, just, you know, arrogantly. Humble yourself. Like you see today, uh, when the people become more ignorant, he walked that way. He think that is really better than anybody. <coughs> Walks that way. No. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَارٍ فَخُورٍ Allah doesn't, doesn't like the person who brought himself too much without any, you know, any sense. Why you do that? Nothing. So, Allah Azza wa Jal has told us, Luqman, he educated and educated his child in that way. So, this is a way we have to follow as a fathers to, toward our children. The only wedge we have, Ya Akhwani Fillah, is to teach the hidayah for our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not ask you in the day of judgment why you did not educate your child and make him graduate from university, that university, and become master in that subject or that subject. No, Allah azza wa jalla will ask you, did you educate your child about the hidayah, about Allah? Three fundamental questions. Al-usul al-talath. That these three questions are very important that we have to master today. Man Rabbuk, who's your Lord? We have to learn who's Allah, His names and His attributes, His qualities. Sah? Man Rabbuk, wa ma nabiyuk, who's your Prophet? Allah Azza wa Jalla bring in front of you Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have to know the, the qualities and uh, the characteristics of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when you know him because you learn him, all his shama'il you used to follow him he was your role model you recognize him right away when you saw him and you say he said who are Muhammad وَمَا دِينُكَ what's your religion this is a very important we cannot live like that just Drink and eat and sleep and grow up and so on. And you will never open the Quran. You never study the, the, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never study aqidah. You never study fiqh. You never study the seerah. You never study anything. You're just ignorant. And then this question is where are you? What is your religion? 
So these fundamental questions we have to learn and master today in this dunya. Right, Akhwan Fila? Naam. So let's move. When a person do that, his child grow up in that way, then that person, he really give the amana. Let's look the uh, two prophets. Both of them, they have children. The first one is Prophet Nabi Allah Nuh. You know the story of Nabi Allah Nuh, right? He was calling to his people, including his children and his wife, his own family. They were kuffar. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةً إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا He was preaching and calling to them and teaching the Tawheed 950 years. That's to that extent he was calling to them. And not only occasionally, in Surah Al-Nuh, Allah gave us details about his da'wah. After he gave, gave up the da'wah of these people, he just mentioned what he did. Rabbi, inni da'awtu qawmi laylan wa nahara falam yazidhum du'a'i illa firara wa inni kullama da'awtuhum litaghfira lahum ja'alu asabi'ahum fi adhanihim wa staghshaw thiyabahum وَأَسَرُّوا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا اسْتِكْبَارًا ثُمَّ إِنِّي دَعَوْتُهُمْ جِهَارًا ثُمَّ إِنِّي أَعْلَنْتُ لَهُمْ وَأَسْرَرْتُ لَهُمْ إِسْرَارًا فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلْ Read the Quran, Surah Al-Nuh. Then Allah Azza wa Jal He saw how He exhausted Nabi Allah Nuh. Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed to him, now is the time to take rest. Huh? Oha ila nuhin annahu lan yu'mina min qawmika illa man qad aman. Oh, Prophet Nuh. No one will become believer from amongst your people except those who accept your da'wah earlier. You're not expecting anyone to accept your da'wah anymore. All of them, they remain and die as a kuffar. Allah gave him bottom line. So when he realized that, now he said, why are they leaving? Because Allah Azza wa Jalla told him, even their children, they grow up and they become more kuffar. No matter if he just expecting the children May some of their children may accept Islam so he can have some hope. Allah gave him no hope from this nation at all, except for you brothers who follow you know, earlier and accept your da'wah. When he realized that, now he asked Allah Azza wa Jal to end their existence. And he gave this da'wah. Rabbi inni maghloobun fantasir. Ah, another ayah. Ah. Wa qala nuhu rabbi. He said, wa qala nuhu. Nuh said, Rabbi, oh my Lord, la tether ala al-ardi. Do not leave on this planet, on this earth. لا تذر آه ديارة لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديارة do not leave any of the kuffar for even their children their families everybody because what we're going to benefit the kuffar just you know babbling in the wall denying Allah سبحانه وتعالى Allah knows that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديارة إنك إن تذرهم He said, Oh Allah, if you just do not 
clean those people from the face of the earth, innaka in tadarhum. What they gonna do? Yudullu ibadak. They will come and fight against the believers. Yudullu ibadak, and they cause those believers and their offspring to go astray again. So they're gonna cause problem for the mu'mineen. We're not expecting good from them. He said, Nabiullah Nuh. إِنَّكَ إِنْ تَذَرْهُمْ يُضِلُّ عِبَادَكَ وَلَا يَلِدُوا Even if they have children, he said, وَلَا يَلِدُوا إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كَفَّارًا Their children, even they, they keep coming kuffar. So what's the benefit to keep these people on the earth? And then Allah Azza wa Jal accept da'wa and he was instructed how to be protected, he and the his followers, in in a way that they would never ex expect it. The, the whole world would be flooded, tofan. And Allah told them to build this ark, as you know the qissa. What I wanted to, to, to say is, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, when you build this ark and this boat, take your family members and your followers. So when the, when, the, when, the, when the rain starts up and the flood came, he called his son. Ya bunayyar ma'ana. Oh my son, his own son. Tell him. Irkam ma'ana. Ride with us. Wala takum ma'al kafirin. Don't remain with the kuffar. Come. So you be protected. He said, Qala sa'awi ila jabal If you, if, if anyone goes to that boat or ark, becoming a believer, I don't want it. I'm not going to accept any, any religion. Any, I don't believe the God you're talking to me. I don't want it. You hear so many people saying today that, that word. Even the curse in Allah. I don't like that God you're talking about. What kind of God you're talking about? Had a kibr. He doesn't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can destroy him. Maybe miskin, he will be destroyed in a minute. Like what happened to the son of Nabi Allah Nuh. He denied to come. He said, I'll go the top of that mount. That is a very tall mount. So this water cannot reach that mount. So I can go in the, in the peak of that mount. So I'll be saved. He said, he knows the messenger of Allah today. No one will survive. My son, today no one will be saved from this punishment except those Allah have shown his mercy upon them and they ride this, this boat. That's it. While the, you know, the dialogue going on, the wave came and took him up. And boo, khalas, he was drowned and died. And that, Nabi Allah, Nuh, touched his heart as, as a father. He saw his son dying from his eyes. And he, he asked Allah a question. question. وَنَادَى نُوحُ الرَّبَّ قَالَ رَبِّ إِنَّ بْنِي مِنْ أَهْلِي وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْتَ أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِينَ He said, why, oh Allah, إِنَّ بْنِي مِنْ أَهْلِي You promised me that you're going to save all my family members. And I know my son is my, 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 my you know, my part of my family. وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقِّ And I know your promise is true. I have some kind of confusion. I need to be clear out that. So I can, my heart be, you know, rest and become, you know, a little bit tranquility, feel, you know, peace. Allah Azza wa Jal gives them quick response and answer. It's not part of your one. Well, it's not part of your family. It's not a member of your family. Inna hu amalun wa yirusalih. 
he really did it and committed uh, an action which is unrighteous action, which is shirk. And you, ha you don't have any ties, anyone who really became mushrik. So that's why the Anbiya, Ahlul Anbiya, the scholars they said, Man hum Ahlul, ahlul Anbiya, hum atba'uhum. Some ulama they said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi. Who's the al? Al who atba'uhu. Because Allah Azza wa Jal here, Nuh said to his son, it's not your son. Because he committed shirk. He did not follow you. Those who follow you, they go with you in a, in a boat and they're your ahl. See that? Allah Azza wa Jal also, Fir'aun, when Allah drowned them, all the soldiers and the followers of Fir'aun, Allah in his name, Ala Fir'aun, family of Fir'aun, because everyone who followed them, they became their family. So we be careful always, the ideologies and the philosophies flying different here, don't adapt to any ideology except what the Quran and Sunnah said. Be careful. You see, brothers and sisters uh, who are Muslim today, they have argumentation and philosophy that comes from atheists. And he names he's a Muslim, but still he adopted this, this philosophy. You be out of these people. It's dangerous. Either you be Ala Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or be Ala Fir'aun. Both, in a ways, you follow in aqidah, you follow in fikr, you follow in the, the, the faith. Naam. So, we know Allah Azza wa Jalla said, He did not blame Nuh. Why your son did not become mu'min? Because he knows Nuh, he already, you know, put forward everything he could to save his son, to make him mu'min, but he couldn't. And Allah Azza wa Jalla never blamed him. He said, you save. He's not your family. Your family, those who believe you. So this is a, what the Quran teaches us here. If the, the, the father or the parents strive for educating their children in the Islamic way, and they did everything, they invest money and time, and they educate them what, the best education. For some reason, this, this kid became wicked. Just wanted to love and go astray. After he became, you know, 18 year old, 20 year old, he became dependent on adult. He starts saying, leave me alone. What are you gonna do? That's hard, really. This is a really something, big problem that humanity facing today. This is a biggest dhulm. How could you say something like that? A person who's been infested at you 20 years, time, money, emotion, everything. And then when you become, leave me alone, this is my life. This is misleading of the, 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 the education that we are educating today, our children. Some people are educating us. And they're teaching us that way. Unlike the Quran, the teaching of the Quran is different. The Quran says to you, always talking to you. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَا Be nice and kind for your parents. The child will become grow up. Allah teaches him as a Muslim kid, be kind and nice for your parents. وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَةُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَحَمْلُهُ كُرْهًا وَفِسَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ See the Quran teaching, subhanallah, how nice is it? And how other teachings and philosophies teaching the humanity and corrupting them. Hey, live your life. Don't listen to your father. Don't listen to your mother. Be the way you want it. Don't indoctrinate your child. 
Let the child be himself. Even they don't accept ah uh, to guide the child to the what's the right, what's the wrong. Don't tell him. You're indoctrinating him. You are in, in jeopardy. So Nabi Ilai Nuh, he's he, he's done his job, and Allah deals with the son, and he's not holding any accountability for that child to go straight. So this is clear, right? So we need to do our part, which is Allah is the one who makes the hidayah. You cannot guide the person you love. Allah guides whom he wills. Let's come to the Nabiullah Ibrahim and his son Ismail. Subhanallah. Ibrahim, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him child until he became an age. Some tafasir, kutub tafasir said he became 80 year old. Allah Azza wa Jal gave him Ismail after he became an age. Okay? So, you know, when a person gets the first child in the old age, we are, we are humankind. We have emotions. The heart will be attached to a child very hard, really. Because he wants offspring. Okay? He wants something, someone to help him. And Allah Azza wa Jalla has tested Ibrahim. Does he love Allah the most? Or this child Allah gave him as a test for him. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, O oh Ibrahim, in the Hajj time, in the time uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla called him to slaughter your son, sacrifice, you be your own son. What a big test. Subhanallah. He did not hesitate. See, see, this is the Iman. He said, I, have, I will talk to my son. I will tell this. This is order of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, Ya Bunayi, inni ara fil manami anni adbahuk. Fandur madha tara. Oh my child. Allah has shown me. And the, the, the vision of the Anbiya is a, is a revelation. is a command. It's not like us. When we see the you know, vision in, in a dream, something, you cannot jump and say, hey, I'm acting upon my dreams. No. But the Anbiya is a revelation because their heart was guided and their mind was guided. Shaitan can I come and play with it or, or put some false message, something like that. No. Whatever message they receive, straight to their heart or their mind, is a revelation. Right? As I have vision that I'm slaughtering you, that's command from Allah Azza wa Jalla to me. And I want to fulfill it. But I need your opinion. But he said, this son, he became Walid Salih. Subhanallah. What he said, Qala ya aba ma tu'mar. See how he understood the vision of his father was Amr from Allah. It was not the dream, just we I dream, I don't know what is what was that. No. That was command. He said, Qala. He said, Ya Abati, O oh my father, if I'll fulfill Ma Tumar, what you have commanded by Allah Azza wa Jal, we just go ahead and slaughter me, sacrifice me. And he did not hesitate. Nabi Lahi, Ibrahim. When both of them has submitted to Allah's will and the command of Allah, both of them, father and son. And he start fulfilling the slaughtered process. He put him down and turn his face the other side and get the knife. Very sharp. Subhanallah. So Allah Azza wa Jal, the mu'jizah came, the miraculous way. Allah protected both of them. Allah has saved for his child and elevated his rank. Allah Azza wa Jal, 
ونديناه ايا ابراهيم قد صدقت الرؤيا he heard the voice saying to him oh ibrahim you have fulfilled your dreams you don't need to slaughter your, your son now قد صدقت الرؤيا ان كذلك نجي المحسنين اه وفدين ان هذا له البلاء المبين سيده التعبير القران how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the, these kind of test. He names, he said, Bala'un Azim. Because so many people will, will, will never do it. He said, If Allah give, tell me this, I, I will never believe him. I, I, I cannot, I cannot, cannot do much to my son this. I don't, I, I straight go hellfire. <laughs> Some people may say that, right? Astaghfirullah <laughs> al-Azim. But Ibrahim said, no. Ismail, so this is the tarbiyah. See that the, the both anbiya, this child went astray and become kafir. And this child became pleasant child. You know, make him, his father feeling good and helps him to become, you know, the highest rank in the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we, have, what we see is here, Allah is the one who guides. We do our job to educate our, our children. To make, we try to, gu to guide them to the haqq. We will put forward and on the table everything that we can to make them mu'mineen, muslimin. Because ultimately, this life is a temporary life. Everybody is going to pass away. And we believe here after and second life, which is eternal life, which it has only two destinations. No, third, either you go paradise if you are mu'min, when you were in dunya, or hellfire if you deny Allah Azza wa Jalla and become kafir. So... This life is very essential. This part of life we are living now is a very important ikhwan fi Allah. And the Quran mentioned that. Because as a humankind, we are really passing through stages until we reach the final stage, which is akhirah. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتَا how you can deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you, you were nothing before you kept this wall where you were. We were nothing. وَقَدْ خَلَقْتُكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ تَكُوا شَيْئًا Before we became in you know, a womb, you our mothers, we were not there. Right? We were exist in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this ayah saying we were in alam al darra. Allah Azza wa Jalla said in the Quran, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِنَا أن تقول يوم القيامة إن كنا عن هذا غافلين إنما أشرك آباؤنا من قبل وكنا ذرية من بعدهم. see Allah Azza wa Jalla has taken all the soul of the offspring of Adam one time and Allah present them and just all of them test them and they testify am I your Lord and they said, Bala, yes, you are our Lord. Shahidna ala anfusina. We said that we have said it. Everybody said that, right? And that we've been existing before this existence, right? And then we come this physical wall. 
where the soul and, and body was united. And this is a very essential because soul itself cannot fulfill all this command, but it needs this kind of body to, to prostrate, to bound down, to stay away from the things Allah forbidden, so and so. So he said, وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you life. You become living person. So another stage, ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ Then he will take the life, he causes you death. ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ So that's the final stage, ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ Again, there's a resurrection. After the death, there's going to be a resurrection. We'll be united again in the body and soul in the day of judgment. Sah? Thumma ish? Thumma ilayhi? Turja'un then is going to start reckoning and hisab. So our final destination depends what we do this world today. If we miss the opportunity by worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, fulfill His commands, Follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely, we will regret after death, after resurrection. And that's what's going to take place. And the Quran already clear. Allah has told us what's going to happen that time. So many people, they say, when they realize, because when second life we came, everything is going to be exposed for us and clear. No truth will be hidden from us. Quran said that. Today your eyes is very sharp and see every truth as it is. Nobody can manipulate you. You see what is right and you realize everything that the messengers were saying in this dunya was the truth. Allah was the truth. So he realized this person, hey, I, when I was in dunya, I was denying all this thing. Oh, now... Rabbana absarna wa sami'na. What are you going to do? Farji'na this time. Oh Allah, we have seen it, the truth now, and we heard it clearly. Now give us another time. Farji'na. Let's go back to dunya again. We will correct the mistake we have done. Sah? Farji'na maada na'mal saliha. We do nothing but the righteous deeds. Inna muqinuna today we are really see the truth. It's the truth. No falsehood. So Allah Azza wa Jalla told them, No. Wa haramun ala qariyatin ahlnaha and nahum la yarjiun. Allah said it's forbidden. Any person who pass away and leave dunya and come to here after, it was forbidden to go back to life again. To dunya. No. It's a one-way ticket. Straightforward. That's the time they start crying. Because they see everything truth. They see their destination is a hellfire. Because the angels are beating them up. Huh? min hadith. Because there is the angels are walking in, 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 in a, after we leave. A person, Prophet ﷺ said, the soul will be received either Malaikatu Rahma or Malaikat Adab al billah Anyway, that's another subject, but what we want to focus is, ya khwani fi Allah, the tarbiyah. When we become accountable for the uh, going our children astray, and Allah Azza wa Jalla will, will, will hold us accountable for their uh, going stray and become kuffar or, or, or mufsidin or so on. This is time. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. Naam. Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ma min abdin yastar'ihi allahu ra'iyatan yamutu yawma yamut wa huwa ghashun li ra'iyatihi this is a scary hadith. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no 
servant that Allah Azza wa Jal will give him responsibility for the people, for his family, for the uh, whole country. He became responsible, leader. يَسْتَرْعِيهِ اللَّهُ رَعِيَّةً يَمُوتُ يَوْمَ يَمُوتُ And pass away and die the day he dies. وَهُوَ غَاشٌ لِلْرَعِيَّتِهِ While he neglects the responsibility of his people. He left his people going to stray. He sees children not doing well in terms of deen. He sees children are going wrong direction. He still, he said, my children, I love you. Get the money. Get the credit card. Get the car. Get the buy everything. Go ahead. I love my children. I'm not those, you know, parents who say, always say, come masjid, come here. I'm not like that type. He was misleading his children. And he acted as his good, you know, and civilized person who will allow his children to do whatever they want to do. The Prophet said, such a person who neglects his children and his responsibility, when he died in, on that situation, Illa harram Allahu alayhi al -jan. Allah Azza wa Jal will deprive him. From him, the Jannah. He will never show the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he neglected all these children to go astray and he was responsible. Yeah. We really need to address this issue in that way. I believe today the, the, the dars was just addressing the last night's a question. If the brothers was clear for that or not. Is that what you were asking yesterday? No. Nah. Nah. What's the other brother? He went to the bathroom. Oh, khair, inshallah. Like the, the, the main answer is that the responsibility is on the wedding parents. Yep. We have to teach them the right in Akira. Absolutely. The right in Islamic Arabia. Yes. If we play that through, they do what they are supposed to do. It's on them. It's on them. That's clear. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى Allah is so just. You did your part. You struggle to, you know, make your children and everybody that you really care of them about the haq. But when they become adult and they take different decision and they go strong, astray, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, you are free from their sin. They take care of themselves. But if you are the one who caused them to, to go to Israel, you're not going to be like that. You carry every sin they have done. Even after the death, they're going to send you all the sin and banishment to your graveyard. What Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala about those who make the people go astray. How many people today are struggling to spread you now uh, disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. There is a movement, there is a organizations, there is a universities, there is a researchers, there is a professors. I'm misleading all the mankind. Teaching them there is no God, there is no religion, that's a, false things. Do whatever you want to do, everything is halal, nothing is haram, no moralities, no akhlaq. That's really what the, some, the religious people, backwards people, what they believe, and they make it you know, spread all over the world. Those people, everybody who followed them, they carry the sin. First of all, they will carry all the heavy sin. The sin today, uh, tomorrow, in the day of judgment, will be transformed. The physical thing, very heavy, like a person carrying, you know, huge mountain, very huge. And he cannot, you know, drop it. No, you have to carry on. Ah, oh, I cannot. You have to. The heavy sin. 
ومن أوزار الذين يضلونهم بغير علم. Also on top of that, they're gonna carry everybody's sin, everybody that they have caused to them to go astray. Their sin will be taken from them, not all of them, similar to them, and they will, he will put again on top of him until Qiyama, until day of judgment. أعوذ بالله من ذلك يا أخوان في الله ومن أوزار الذين يضلون على ساء ما يزرون الله سبحانه he said والله that's very bad thing what they're gonna carry out in the day of judgment is gonna be something very evil thing نسأل الله السلام والعافية so the Quran is clear Allah is just إن الله لا يظلم مثقال ذرة الله will never make the unjust even little things. Everybody is going to get the real just and fairness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ultimate just. So what we need, we have to correct our niyyah and our action. Then Allah Azza wa Jal will, accordingly, He will judge us in, in our intention and according to our amal. As-salallahu al-azim, Rabbi Rashid al-Kareem, an yaghfir lana dhunubana, wa israfana fi amrina, wa an yithabit aqdamana, wa an yansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin, وأن يهدينا إلى سواء السبيل سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا يا أرحم الراحمين وتوفنا ونحن مسلمون يا أرحم الراحمين ولا تضل أولادنا من بعدنا يا أرحم الراحمين إنك على كل شيء قدير وبالإجابة جدير وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين